good morning ladies and gentlemen uh, i hope i am uh, audible uh, professor sharma yeah. i am yes yeah, yeah. yeah. uh, we will start uh, the workshop now professor sharma uh, thank you very much for accepting to conduct this uh, workshop on marine fungi um, before we start this uh, workshop i would like to give a brief introduction uh, about uh, professor bemuri venkateshwar from uh, pondicherry university uh, india uh, professor bemuri uh, venkateshwar sharma did his msc and mphil from uh, rkm vivekananda college chennai then he did a phd on uh, biodiversity and ecology of marine fungi at uh, you know center for advanced studies in botany university of madras uh, during 1993 to 1998 under one of the uh, legends of uh, indian mycology professor b p r vital uh, um, professor bemuri venkateshwara sarma actually did his phd on biodiversity and ecology of marine fungi from godavari and krishna delta east coast of india uh, then he did his first postdoctoral work at uh, CSIR National Institute of Oceanography at Goa uh, under the guidance of uh, Dr. Sheshagiri Raghu Kumar. Uh, that was during November 1998 uh, to June 1999. Uh, then he did his uh, second postdoctoral uh, training with uh, Dr. Kevin D. Hyde at the Department of Ecology and Biodiversity that time, University of Hong Kong. Uh, then he came to India, came back to India in uh, in 2001. Actually, I joined uh, Dr. Kevin Knight's lab in 2003. Before that, actually, Professor Aswan Sarma has already left for India. Anyway, once he came back to India, he worked as a senior scientist uh, at uh, Biocon. I mean, he worked as a, worked for Biocon India. Then he worked as a senior scientist in um, Sri AMM Murugappa Chetia Research Center, Chennai. Uh, that was during 2004 to 2008. In 2009, he joined Pondicherry University. Uh, now he is working as uh, as a professor in the Department of Biotechnology. He has already supervised uh, four PhD students, uh, and uh, one has already submitted his PhD thesis. Three PhD students are under with him. Uh, he has been elected as a fellow of Mycological Society of India, and uh, he has already completed two research projects on fungal diversity. Uh, currently, he is handling two new projects sponsored by MOES and SCRB, Government of India. He has uh, more than uh, 122 publications. Uh, his uh, H index is 21. His cumulative impact factor is 20. He is a life member of Mycological Society of India. He is a life member of Association of Microbiologists of India. And he is an associate edit editor of MycoAsia Journal. In, uh, and also, he works for uh, actually. Um, work as an associate editor for current research in environmental and applied mycology. Of course, he has been serving as a reviewer for many mycological journals, such as Botanica Marina, Mycosphere, uh, Mycology, Fungal Biology, Fungal Ecology, Kavakam, Cream, Fungal Diversity, uh, Fungal Biology, and Biotechnology. Of course, our own journal, MycoAsia. Uh, with this brief introduction, now I request Professor Vemuri Venkateshwara Sarma Garu to start his uh, workshop on Maran Fungi for beginners. Uh, over to you, Professor Sarma. Thank you, Dr. Tamadurshanai. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, I should appreciate that uh, Microasia has been doing a human service by sponsoring these lectures and uh, uh, making the uh, knowledge and information available to wider audience. Uh, it's a good effort. Uh, I congratulate you. Um, and I hope uh, down the line you have a series of other lectures also which are coming. So uh, for today's lecture, I will switch over to the uh, presentation mode. OK, can you see my slides? Yes, Professor. Yes. OK, thank you. Thank you. So you all know that um, uh, the uh, Five Kingdom concept that has been proposed by Vitaker in 1969 uh, has raised uh, fungi to the level of uh, kingdom uh, because of uh, unique uh, characteristics like uh, presence of chitin in the cell walls and uh, ergosterol as one of the sterols instead of uh, cholesterol that you find in animals or uh, stigmasterol you find in uh, uh, plants 
they have their own sterol ergosterol and many other characteristics uh, like they are heterotrophs but they are not uh, having any locomotion so some of these characters have put them in a special kingdom uh, separate kingdom and earlier uh, the fungi were studied under uh, botany classes uh, along with the plants but uh, now you can see that uh, plants are far away from fungi in fact fungi are much closer to animals uh, because of various studies uh, particularly the molecular studies uh, they could uh, 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 find that uh, the fungi are more closer to animals so what are fungi i'll just uh, give a brief introduction because this is also a uh, title itself is uh, for beginners uh, before jumping on to marine fungi we'll just see what are uh, the fungi so they are heterotrophic achlorophyllous uh, eukaryotic and mycelium producing uh, microscopic organisms of course uh, in the case of macrofungi you find those uh, mushrooms and uh, big fruit, bo fruit bodies so where they can be found uh, they are ubiquitous uh, aquatic terrestrial and uh, airborne on plants animals and other microbes mostly you find in detritus cycles as a symbiotic also you can find them so how they look like uh, most of them are uh, filamentous with um, hyphae and mycelium forming some are uh, unicellular and the ideal conditions are that if you have a little bit of moisture that is more than enough uh, for the fungal infestation and their role is mainly in degradation of the dead organic matter but also 80 percent of the plant pathogens are fungi so if you see uh, in the geological time scale the uh, evolution has taken place from aquatic conditions to the terrestrial conditions so initially these fungi were having flagella which helped them to uh, swim so the motility was uh, a, a primitive character and the loss of motility in, uh, in the terrestrial conditions is an advanced character so the uh, uh, lower fungi which have these uh, flagella are also found and in the coastal environments you will find the loss of this uh, flagella and instead uh, as i will be showing they will have uh, miscellaneous sheets and uh, the appendages so these are the groups uh, which are having high diversity ascomaster and uh, decidiomycota almost uh, 90,000 plus 50,000, 140,000 species are found, whereas uh, these lower groups are uh, less diverse. The fungi can be broadly divided into higher fungi and lower fungi. The lower fungi have a kind of xenocytic condition where the nuclear embedded within the, uh, uh, the uh, hyphal structures without any cross wall septum. These kind of divisions are not there. They are randomly present, the nuclei. Whereas in higher fungi, you have uh, demarcations or uh, this kind of compartmentalization with the cross wall septum formation. This you find in higher fungi like Ascomycota and uh, Decidiomycota. So in lower fungi, they have this flagella like this uh, posterior uh, whiplash flagella which is present in Chitidomyces. Interestingly, this uh, is shown closer to fungi uh, uh, with uh, molecular studies, etc. Whereas these uh, uh, groups of uh, fungi like uh, hypochitidomyces with anterior tensile flagellum and biflagellate uh, containing uh, woomycetes they are no longer under uh, true fungi they have been removed uh, and uh, present in other uh, groups whereas uh, the loss of uh, this flagellum has uh, also re given rise to some of these uh, specialized sexual structures in jagomycotina with the jagospore formation like this and then the ascomycota have different kinds of fruit bodies. Uh, the basically these ascomycetes form ascospores within a sac-like structure, typically eight. They can raise, arise directly from hyphae uh, in the primitive forms like taphrae nails, or the assay are enclosed within uh, the fruit bodies, either completely completely closed global structures like this, or in a flat shape like this are in a uh, saucer shape uh, like this the previous names for these are the plectomycetes are a uh, clistocecial fruit body the uh, pyranomycetes with the uh, flashed shaped fruit bodies and the disc shaped fruit bodies are discomycetes and if this kind of bilayer is not there a peridial layer then they are called as local ascomycetes but uh, such local ascomycetes are now under dothidiomycetes so these are the different uh, assay uh, within which the ascospores are present 
typically eight, but rarely you will find a two or four also. Different shapes of uh, ASCO spores are found in uh, in nature. Now, why I'm uh, focusing on ASCO mycota is that uh, eighty percent of the marine fungi belong to this group ASCO mycetes. Uh, you don't find any of the macroscopic uh, uh, basidiomycetes uh, like mushrooms. These, these are the uh, basidia where you find the basidia spores, the sexual genes found externally to the uh, basidium instead of uh, ascospores, ascospores found within an ascus. So you don't find these uh, uh, fruit bodies, the macroscopic mushrooms in uh, marine environment because there is no scope for uh, such a uh, for the formation of these uh, fruit bodies because of the continuous uh, agitation of the seawater, lack of uh, plant substrata, that results in lack of these uh, basidiomycetes. Of course, we have a few representatives of basidiomycetes, uh, but uh, they are microscopic in nature, basically. So coming to marine fungi, uh, way back in 1979, Colmer and Colmer, they have given a, a definition wherein they say, Obligate marine fungi are those that grow and sporulate exclusively in a marine or estuarine habitat. That means you should not find these marine fungi in terrestrial environments. That's what it means. They are found only in marine environment. Whereas these faculty to marine fungi are those from freshwater or terrestrial milieus able to grow and possibly also sporulate in the marine environment. That means their origin could be freshwater or terrestrial, but they have capability to sporulate and establish in marine environment. Uh, basically, the fungi colonizing aerial parts of mangrove plants or other shoreland plants are generally typical terrestrial species only. But those parts which are inundated or submerged, completely are submerged and exposed uh, by intertidal waters, are considered to be marine fungi. So if you go to the coastal environments like mangroves or shoreline plants, those uh, aerial parts will invariably have a lot of uh, terrestrial species, but uh, those which are uh, immersed in the marine waters, you will find the marine fungi. So there have been different uh, 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 fungal species found across the uh, fungal kingdom. So they are not taxonomically limited, but uh, an ecologically and physiologically defined group. Uh, in 2016, Pang et al. offered a revised definition for marine fungi as any fungus that is recoverable uh, repeatedly from marine habitats due to its ability to grow and or sporulate on different substrata in uh, marine environments or uh, formation of symbiotic relationship with other marine organisms or its ability to adapt and evolve at the genetic level or be metabolically active in marine environments. So based on this revised definition, because in deep sea environments, a lot of terrestrial forms like Aspergillae penicillia have been frequently encountered. And uh, uh, if you say that uh, uh, only uh, obligate ones which are recorded only in the marine environment have to be included, then what are these Aspergillae and penicillia doing in those deep sea environments? If not well settled, well adapted, and in fact, playing a major role in the degradation of the uh, uh, detritor matter in the deep sea conditions. So this definition has broadened the scope of inclusion of marine fungi of different uh, uh, forms. So where do you find uh, marine fungi? Uh, driftwood has been one of the uh, foremost uh, uh, substrata uh, that has been reported with a number of uh, marine fungi with the different uh, 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 sport kinds of spores. Then slowly later on, it has been found that mangroves also offer a better substratum uh, for uh, the marine fungi, and uh, the diversity has increased like anything once these mangrove substrata have been started to be examined for marine fungi. And of course, halophytic or salt marsh plants also uh, accommodate these marine fungi, the dead corals, algae, sand grains, and any of the other uh, uh, plant or uh, animal substrata did uh, uh, also offer uh, 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 substratum for the marine fungi. So if you see this uh, slide, uh, the coastal environments like mangroves or the shoreline plants or the sea grasses, they give an anchorage and a support for most of these ascomycetes to thrive on and form their fruit bodies, small uh, microscopic fruit bodies. Whereas this entire uh, pelagic environment, the open seas, 
you don't have any plant substrata here only unicellular algae thriving in this uh, kind of uh, uh, the, the open seas so and unicellular algae that two living algae they cannot uh, offer uh, the substratum for the marine fungi particularly the filamentous marine fungi so uh, the uh, the diversity has been reported to be very low in such open sea because of the highly diluted nature of this uh, seawater in uh, be, even though you have three fourth of the earth covered by seawater because of this uh, lack of uh, a, a substratum solid substratum for the anchorage for uh, filamentous fungi you will find mostly the unicellular yeast and other lower uh, uh, fungi uh, to be thriving in this uh, open seas uh, and in fact the death of this unicellular algae uh, which will be falling to the bottom the benthic areas uh, sea bottom sea bed at uh, various velocities and then once they uh, reach the uh, bed you have this uh, sand grains or this organic detritus matter which is uh, increasing the availability of organic content for the survival of this uh, marine fungi particularly oh sorry this is <laughs> diwali time so uh, okay so the you have this uh, uh, the marine fungi the aspergillus and penicillium thriving on this uh, uh, dead, dead, dead organic matter and uh, if you see the diversity uh, in 1979 when colmer presented uh, only 209 marine fungi belonging to 106 uh, genera were reported but uh, in 91 it has increased to 321 by 2444 by 2009 530 and after the uh, definition of what is a marine fungus has been offered by Pang et al in 2016 a lot of aspergill and penicillia have been included and the diversity has increased but even then if you see carefully we have more than 150000 uh, uh, fungi from terrestrial environments and uh, this is uh, less than or around 1% of uh, marine fungi which shows that uh, the, uh, the diversity is very low in the marine environment and uh, you can see that uh, most of these uh, marine forms are dominated by this group ascomycota and very few basidiomycetes are there which form these uh, uh, the uh, fruit bodies but they are not macroscopic ones but uh, microscopic uh, basidiomycetes and the anamorphic species are the asexual fungi or uh, uh, considerable number are there and uh, chytridiomycetes are there uh, basidiomycetes yeasts are uh, are in good number like ascomycetes uh, yeast are also around above 100. So the presently, if you, the Professor Gareth Jones is maintaining a website on uh, marine fungi, and uh, he has shown that the number is around uh, 1,857 species belonging to 769 genera. But you can see how diverse they are because uh, uh, they belong to 226 uh, uh, families, 88 orders, so 22 classes. So they don't belong to one particular taxonomic group, but uh, varied uh, groups. So, what are the speciality of this marine fungi? Number one, it will highly diluted medium. So, you don't uh, have any anchorage in the open seas. Any chance occurrence of a driftwood or a mangrove is the only uh, substratum that is available for these marine fungi. And when such a uh, driftwood or uh, this uh, mangrove uh, are available, they have to have some special adaptations to catch or attach to those uh, substrata. So these marine fungi have developed uh, different types of uh, sheets and appendages to, uh, to adhere to or attach to the uh, substrata. And more than 95% of them are uh, saprobic. And there is one particular family or order, Halosperials, uh, which has uh, more than 140 species. This particular family, Halosperiaceae, has 141 species belonging to more than 60 genera. So this is the most diverse one. And most of these uh, members belong to this hallow species. You don't find normally in terrestrial environments except in uh, freshwater fungi. So this is the kind of uh, appendages that help them to attach to the surfaces of uh, uh, any uh, chance occurrence of uh, plant material that is uh, drifting in the seawater. And these appendages unfurl and form long thread-like structures and then try to coil to the 
uh, driftwood or any other woody pieces. In addition to those appendages, this kind of uh, mucilaginous sheets, which give a, 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 what you call a gummy substance, this makes them to attach to the, the surfaces of the uh, plant substrata. So these adaptations help them to attach to the uh, substrata, very rare occurrence or chance occurrence of driftwood. You can imagine in such a di diverse, uh, uh, huge uh, realm of uh, marine waters, uh, driftwood is very rare. So unless they have this kind of adaptations, they cannot uh, colonize and thrive and reach those uh, substrata. So appendages and mucilages help, uh, sheets help in attachment to the surfaces or substrata. And uh, many marine fungi have been implicated in uh, uh, biodegrading the boats and ships. So they, they will be spoiling the uh, wooden structures in the uh, boats and ships. Uh, if they are untreated, of course, uh, with the paints and other things, it is different. But if any untreated uh, wooden structures are there, they will be attacked by this marine fungi. So marine fungi are involved in the degradation of the dead and decomposing biomass of mangrove and other shoreline plants. So in fact, they help in the uh, recycling of uh, nutrients. And I said the uh, algae periods and the driftwood. And most of the initial reports on marine fungi were from uh, driftwood. And uh, beautiful appendages like this, different kinds of appendages uh, were reported in the early studies. You have different kinds of these kind of appendages which help them to attach to the surfaces. You don't find normally this many varieties or structures or spores in the terrestrial environment or even in the mangroves and other environments except this uh, driftwood. Mangroves, we do get, uh, get some uh, marine fungi with uh, this kind of uh, uh, appendages and mucilaginous sheets. So after the definition of marine fungi has been revised uh, to accommodate all those fungi which are physically involved, functionally are there, and they can adapt, thrive, and are involved in the degradation, and the, uh, the examination and enumeration shows that Aspergillus is the most species uh, genus uh, followed by penicillium and of course other uh, typical marine fungi also. Uh, in addition to that, uh, Canada is among the east. So in the mangroves, uh, earlier driftwood was found to be the most uh, uh, dominant uh, substratum or host for the marine fungi. But later on, uh, once the mangroves were started sampling, many uh, marine fungi were recorded from mangroves. The reason is that these seawaters inundate these uh, uh, exposed parts of these crop roots of uh, uh, mangrove plants or this, this kind of uh, pneumatophores or the woody pieces that are falling in the marine waters. They are very good substratum for uh, marine fungi. In fact, now uh, more than 400 uh, marine fungi have been reported from mangroves uh, from uh, India alone. So these uh, nematophores, when they are dead, and uh, these uh, prop roots, uh, the dead and decomposing, uh, they are the best uh, uh, substrate for marine fungi, particularly those that can be easily plucked with your hand. Uh, that means they are almost dead uh, after senescence. And uh, they, the, such a standing crop uh, also offers a very good substratum for these marine fungi to colonize and form the fruit bodies of course, uh, microscopic fruit bodies. Once again, you don't find uh, big uh, basidiomycet uh, macroscopic fruit bodies because of the continuous inundation of these marine waters during uh, high tide and low tide. The abrasions uh, doesn't allow uh, uh, macroscopic mushroom fruit body formation, but they do allow the microscopic ascomycet fruit bodies to form the, in these uh, woody substrata. This is another uh, the plant, Avicennia, which also hosts a lot of marine fungi because during high tide, the waters come inside uh, up, up, upstream and then all these pots get uh, uh, moistened with uh, uh, the marine waters. So they get marooned and then during low tide, the, the, when the waters recede mm -hmm. and it, it, these parts are exposed. So this is a typical uh, uh, um, situation where you have um, 
marine part means uh, these plant parts immersed in water, marine waters and also exposed immersion exposure that gives a special type of uh, marine fungi particularly some of the deuteriomyces are formed under these conditions or you have this uh, as i said easily pluck, uh, pluck, pluckable uh, the regiophora uh, the prop roots they can be easily taken by your hands and uh, these are the uh, different uh, samples that you get in the marine environment you can collect in these uh, plastic bags bring them back to your laboratory and then uh, uh, you can wash them and a uh, uh, little bit uh, expose them and then uh, this is these are the nematophores these are seedlings and uh, you can examine under stereo zoom microscope and wherever the fruit bodies are located, you put these uh, pins so that you can easily identify later on whenever you want to. And then uh, make slides, observe under compound microscope. If you have a DAC microscope, that is differential interference contrast microscope, you can uh, take out those pictures of mucilaginous trees. Now, under normal microscopes, so you cannot uh, discern those uh, uh, mucilaginous trees or appendages. But uh, if you are lucky uh, to have a differential interference contrast microscope, you can get beautiful pictures of uh, those miscellaneous trees and different types of appendages. So when the uh, samples are brought, you have to thoroughly wash them and then you can incubate in these uh, plastic bread boxes with uh, moistened with the sterile uh, digital water or marine water. And then initially absorb under stereo zoom microscope, uh, make slides and, uh, and absorb under light microscope. And you can uh, go for uh, single spore isolation with the help of a spirit lamp. Uh, if you have a cavity slide or a embryo cup, uh, you can prepare a spore suspension by scooping out the fruit body uh, content with, within these uh, uh, woody pieces. Uh, you will find uh, uh, the fruit bodies when you observe under the stereo zoom microscope and you can cut the expose them and take the spore content from inside these uh, 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 woody structures, these wooden pieces and then prepare a spore suspension. From this spore suspension, you can dispense uh, uh, small droplets onto a petri plate that has a minimal medium or uh, agar, uh, simple agar or uh, any uh, less nutrient uh, based uh, nutrient agar or nutrient medium uh, so that uh, the spores get germinated uh, immediately within 24 hours. Uh, so if you locate the single spore, you can transfer to a fresh plate and to make sure uh, that they are pure, you can place it in uh, three or four places. And once you establish a pure culture, you can uh, store them, preserve them, or go for uh, DNA isolations, etc. And uh, the recent molecular studies are helping in uh, establishing the identity of the uh, fungi, uh, not only identity, but also uh, in the establishment of uh, new species, new genera, because uh, uh, whatever morphological uh, uh, features are there, uh, these molecular studies are also complementing for the establishment of those new genera and new species. Both uh, nucleic acid regions and uh, protein coding sequences are uh, used as primers for the identification of uh, the marine fungi. More of this ITS, uh, small subunit and uh, large subunit are used. And uh, if uh, the these uh, three are not enough, uh, some protein coding genes are also used as a part of multi-gene analysis. So you have different uh, programs as uh, shown in the previous lectures in Mycoasia. Uh, so uh, with those uh, tools, uh, phylograms can be constructed to locate uh, your uh, uh, genus, whether it is a new species or new genus can be established. And these molecular tools are nowadays uh, quite often used uh, for the establishment of new genera and new species. So with uh, India having a vast coastline 6,000 kilometers covering east and west coast, we have very good number of mangrove uh, formations throughout the east and west coast. Of course, uh, bre uh, different uh, riverine systems, uh, delta areas. And when we reviewed uh, around 400 marine fungi have been reported from India, of which 300 are from mangrove habitats alone. And uh, in recent times, uh, uh, we have reported more than 30 uh, new species uh, from our lab, Dev Dutta and myself from the Muthipet. Uh, now, uh, more than 44 new fungal species have been introduced from India. So these are the mangrove formations. You have largest belt uh, in uh, Sundarbans in India. 
uh, which is uh, virtual means it is uh, still unexplored largely and then in the kutch area also have uh, very good the formation of uh, mangroves uh, but then uh, the godavari and krishna and pichavar and muthupet have been thoroughly studied from east coast of india and the karnataka mangroves uh, goa and uh, mumbai uh, these mangroves from the west coast have been uh, thoroughly sampled and andaman is again uh, uh, an area which uh, hidden treasures and we have just started a project from here so as i said mangroves are the best host for marine fungi in addition to driftwood so that is why we are embarking on this mangrove substrata uh, studies on the mangrove plants resulting in a lot of uh, novel fungi so those 400 marine fungi that are recorded from india include the labyrinth low mycota 14 species uh skytidium mycota 4 o mycota 4 but you can see that uh, the asco mycota and uh, basilium mycota form around 378 species in fact asco mycota you can say around 350 80 percent of the marine fungi belong to this uh asco uh, ascomycetes Several mangrove formations and uh, west and uh, east coast have been surveyed and uh, the diversity studies of marine fungi were predominantly carried out in India, uh, while only one uh, institute, you can say, uh, which has concentrated on physiology and biotechnology of marine fungi, and that is the National Institute of Oceanography. Otherwise, ecological observations are made by many, like uh, looking at the host and substrate recurrence, uh, frequency of occurrence of marine fungi, vertical distribution of marine fungi and plant substrata, the seasonal occurrence of marine fungi, and the litter bag studies for loss of uh, biomass studies have been conducted from NIVA by Dr. Raghu Kumar. And uh, in, just to show that how this marine mycology has started, uh, initial contributions were, came from Willy Hong, then from uh, uh, FK Sparrow, and Jan Kolmeyer started uh, working on this direct examination method where under stereo zoom microscope, you will be examining the uh, woody pieces. They were working on uh, the water and in waters, they were isolating a lot of these uh, 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 thrastrochytes, oomycetes, uh, chytidomycetes. Then Sam Mayers also contributed initial uh, initially for marine fungi. Then uh, uh, Gareth Jones, uh, uh, who is active at 85 years he is still contributing a lot on marine fungi and uh, uh, kevin d hyde dr kevin d hyde from initially from uh, department of uh, ecology and biodiversity hong kong and uh, presently in thailand he has contributed a lot to the marine fungi uh, initially and then of course he has situ switched over to the terrestrial fungi from india uh, initial contributions came from Dr. Shashagir Rao Kumar when, uh, during his PhD from Madras University and uh, the physiology and biotechnology of marine fungi by Dr. Chandrata Rao Kumar. And Professor BPR Vittal uh, has studied the marine fungi from Andhra coast and uh, Tamil Nadu coast. And uh, I was uh, his PhD student working on this uh, Godavar and Krishna Delta areas. And Professor Sridhar has worked from the West Coast, particularly the Karnataka coast, uh, the Kerala and uh, Goa, uh, etc. Uh, Dr. B. D. Borse from Maharashtra, he has studied uh, the marine diversity, and uh, Dr. Mani Mohan from uh, Kerala coast. These are the present uh, marine mycologists, uh, Ravindran at Neva Goa, Dr. Samir uh, uh, Damare from Neva Goa, Dr. Damodar Shanai from Vizag, Neva. Dr. Catherine Manohar from uh, uh, NIO Goa and uh, Dr. Varda Damari from uh, uh, Goa University and B.D. Devadatta, he has worked in our lab. These are the uh, present uh, marine mycologists. And of course, myself, uh, those who worked with me in Hong Kong would remember me, uh, but now a lot of metamorphosis has occurred. So, Initially, it was thought that the driftwood alone supports a higher number of marine fungi, but later on it has been proved that mangrove woody substrates are much better and support a very big number of marine fungi. Uh, and accordingly, most of the studies in India are concentrated on ma mangroves. So among the different mangrove plants, you will find this uh, rhizophora, which has these uh, uh, prop roots, accommodates large number of fungi. In fact, uh, in one particular study in Andhra Pradesh alone, uh, I have recorded 64 marine fungi and rhizophora piculata. 
and followed by these uh, Avicennias, Avicennia officinalis and Avicennia marina, they are also very good. When I reviewed uh, the marine fungi and ratio for a world level, 200 typical marine fungi have been recorded. This is exclusive of terrestrial fungi that one can record on the Rhizophora. Marine fungi alone 200 from this Rhizophora, but of course different species of Rhizophora throughout the world. And a, a similar number is, can be expected from Avicennia also, these was. And after Rhizophora and Avicennia, one more host which supports a large number of marine fungi is this Nipah fruticans, a mangrove palm, uh, which uh, you don't get on the mainland, but they are uh, very well present in the Andaman Islands. Uh, this Nipah fruticans offers a very good substrate for marine fungi. Both the fronds and the leaves uh, support marine fungi. More than 30 exclusive Fung marine fungi are found on this particular host. That means you don't uh, get those marine fungi on other hosts, uh, but they are present in uh, in some other countries. As far as India is concerned, they are mostly present in Andaman. Maybe a few representatives elsewhere in Sundarbans, etc. So if you see the different mangrove hosts, you have this Rhizophora dominating Avicennia officinalis and Avicennia marina, and uh, we thought that uh, the other plants are less diverse, but uh, it is true that they are less diverse. Uh, but then you can see that uh, they, they are also not easily accessible. Their diversity itself is very low in mangrove environments. Like uh, Escugora agalocha is very dominant, but uh, you don't find much diversity of marine fungi. Uh, Aegiseras carniculatum, very few representatives are there. Sonyracea epitella, with, uh, which also forms these nematophores, that is also less diverse. And uh, Acanthus elipsis follows, you don't find much fungi. And these uh, shoreline plants, we thought uh, like uh, Sweda Maritima, uh, no diversity of marine fungi. But to our surprise, there is one plant, Sweda Monica, which is found in the uh, Muthupet uh, uh, mangroves. It was uh, supporting a large number of marine fungi, which was a surprise for us. Basically, uh, it has uh, a, a woody uh, substrate, a stem, woody stem. And uh, we found almost eight new fungi on this substrate, uh, which encourages that if you keep looking for new uh, host plants, you may end up uh, with a very good uh, number of uh, novel marine fungi. So these are the eight marine fungi that we found from this uh, Sweda monica, which is rare in its occurrence in mangrove uh, uh, forests. And in fact, uh, almost 34 marine fungi were recorded on this plant with uh, some of them uh, dominating like uh, uh, Remora mangrove. These were the dominant forms. So uh, as far as India is concerned, uh, from Indian coast, 44 novel marine fungi have been introduced. These are the ones which are uh, reported from Indian coast as new uh, marine fungi. All these marine fungi were reported from India. Some more forms. Mostly ascomacids have been reported. Now I will show. Uh, I will show you the diversity, what we have recorded with our own uh, um, fungal collections. Uh, the unit unicate ascomycetes is the earlier name used, and most of them are sodaromycetes. Uh, now they are called as sodaromycetes. And uh, if you can use the older uh, terminology, pyranomycetes, uh, I will initially show you the uh, globose shaped uh, fruit bodies, ascomata, which were called as clistothecial fungi earlier. You have job fielders with this kind of uh, ascospores, uh, brown and uh, uh, hyaline uh, lower cells, and then uh, smaller lower cell and uh, uh, brown larger cell, another job filler. And then the pyranomycetes, uh, hypocryal members are recorded from India, like this Calichroma tethys. And uh, one more uh, fungus, new fungus we recorded from Muthupet mangroves, which we named it as uh, Physicola bharatavarshe. Uh, and then uh, xylereals, which are normally recorded in uh, terrestrial environments, are also recorded in mangrove uh, plants, which are degrading these mangrove plants, which normally have these uh, germ slits. And also, uh, they form this kind of uh, hard fruit bodies. Uh, some course, sometimes they are brittle. On the woody substrates, wood pieces, you will find superficial, easily you can uh, find them. But uh, of course, uh, small uh, raised bodies. And uh, these uh, anthostomellas are also found, which are 
deeply seated within the substrata. So these uh, hypoxylin uh, fruit bodies are formed on the substrata. Uh, we named it as Thera Vasati because it's found in a uh, uh, coastal environment. And many of them are iodine positive uh, or iodine negative that gives uh, an indication of uh, their uh, uh, pickle apex uh, nature in the assay of these uh, uh, ascomycetous forms. Um, some of them have uh, the miscellaneous sheets and uh, this is the bluing. Uh, that means the carbohydrate content starts, uh, turns blue when you apply this major reagent which has this iodine. And this is useful for uh, the identification. Normally you find this kind of uh, uh, xylereals or uh, the other groups uh, in a terrestrial environment. But uh, after we started uh, the examination of mangrove substrata, we started recording this kind of uh, the xylereals and diatripelian fungi, which has increased the diversity of marine fungi. You have this kind of uh, the apical rings, and some of them are deeply seated within the uh, wood piece and uh, have this kind of uh, allantoid ascospores. These are all deeply seated inside the wood piece. And rarely you, we also record uh, the polysporous uh, as, as, assay. That means multispore assay with a lot of ascospores instead of a typical eight ascospores. And uh, diaporthelian forms are also recorded, uh, which are uh, uh, sometimes uh, 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 aseptic or with uh, this kind of filamentous uh, ascospores with uh, striations. Unless you uh, observe under 100x, you cannot make out these kind of striations. And other uh, unit weight fungi like linocarbon bipolars, these fungi you normally record from Nipah fruit against the mangrove form, which has increased the diversity of marine fungi with this kind of uh, forms, linocarbon. But uh, otherwise, we have uh, some fungi which are common to different hosts like Merinos for a mangrove and uh, the several we also recorded a two score ascus and some other forms with uh, the miscellaneous sheets. And uh, these are the, uh, the, uh, the brown cells, middle cells, and the end uh, highland cells increases the diversity of these fungi. And as I said, the halosperials have been recorded with 144 species, more than belonging to more than 60 genera. And many of them have, of course, these groups have been. Uh, uh, transferred to Lulworth Yales. Uh, and they also have this uh, apical rings, which indicates of their uh, active dispersal mechanism. This uh, apical rings increase the dispersal of these ascospores. Uh, many of them have long necks on the, uh, that means the food body will be inside the wood piece. The necks will be protruding out. Some of the Aneptodera, uh, Chesapeakensis and Aneptodera species have been uh, recorded uh, uh, with many species, uh, some of them have unipolar appendages like this, or without appendages in the same one and the same fungus, like Aniptodora chesapeakensis, or bipolar appendages on the two poles of these ascospores, and sometimes a cap like appendage uh, also recorded, like this uh, Tirispora mandoviana. Uh, initially, I thought of giving the name uh, Tirispora choravensis. But uh, Professor uh, Raghumar Sar said uh, better to give it as uh, Mondo Viana because it is occurred on the river Mondovi. So this has been recorded from Goa with a single appendage. And uh, some of the huge ascos were also recorded from the mangrove environments, this kind of appendages like Sagaromyces, Halosurfia, minute ascospores, that is why the name is Minuta. You have Sagaromyces ratnagrins with this kind of uh, appendages, and you can see those uh, uh, oil globules and also the apical ring. You can see these uh, gutules, oil globules with uh, huge uh, ascospores. And these appendages unfold, as I said, into long thread like structures which help them to co coil around the woody uh, pieces. In addition to this uh, sodaromyces, which have unitunicate uh, fungi, uh, we have also a good number of uh, bitunicate fungi. Bitunicate means uh, two tunica, two layers will be there around the ascus. Now they are uh, grouped under dothidiomycetes. 
So Vericulina inelia is the most common marine fungus that we have recovered from the Indian coast and also elsewhere. These are some of the uh, Dothidiomycetes uh, ascomycetes. And uh, one of the uh, special feature of this bituniate fungi is that uh, they have fissi tunicate mechanism wherein the inner ascus wall along with that uh, it pushes out the outer ascus wall punctures it you can see that it has been broken this outer wall and then uh, gets dispersed so this is called as uh, fissi tunicate mechanism which you find in dothidiomycetes this is a classic example and very good for uh, teaching purposes to demonstrate how fissi tunicate mechanism occurs it is basically a what you call uh, the active dispersal mechanism And these are other uh, forms with the huge ascospores. You have uh, the this is the wood piece on which you'll find small raised uh, bodies. And if you cut them, you'll find this kind of uh, ascos uh, assay and ascospores uh, with the miscellaneous sheets or uh, the appendages. These are the you have to look for uh, this kind of raised bodies on the uh, woody substrata. This is the sheet that I have shown and appendages and some other forms with those uh, miscellaneous sheets. Uh, uh, only with the DAC microscope, you can clearly observe this kind of uh, miscellaneous sheets. See, this would, this kind of sheet you would definitely miss with the other, uh, uh, means Brightfield and others, but with uh, the DAC, uh, you can uh, make out these uh, miscellaneous sheets. So you have huge uh, ascospores of these dothriomycetes, and you can see that it's a small uh, raised body on the woody piece, but when you cut it, it will be, have been deeply seated uh, fruit body with this kind of uh, assay and ascospores. See, this is, these are the indications of that uh, fruit body, uh, ascomycet uh, fruit body. You have to suspect this could be an ascomycet and cut it randomly across, and you can see that such a deep seated fruit body inside that accommodates the entire length of this uh, assay and a huge ascospores. Of course, when enlarged it uh, 10 into 100, you can find them as huge, but otherwise uh, they, are, they are microscopy in nature. You have to have a microscope. These are uh, some other forms with the tetraspored uh, ascospores. And this is very common fungus, Remora mangroi, uh, reported by Professor B.P.R. Vittel from Indian Coast, along with uh, Dr. Jane Colmeyer. This is how these uh, superficial fruit bodies are formed. And some hysteriaceae members are also recorded in mangroves. These are the fruit bodies, superficial fruit bodies of uh, hysteriomycetes. And other uh, uh, marine fungi uh, belong to this dothriomycetes group. And uh, we have this uh, distoseptate uh, ascospores also recorded in marine environment. And uh, some apothecoid fungi, they are basically bituminated fungi, but they have uh, uh, apothecoid fruit bodies, uh, looking like apothecial fungi that you find in uh, pesce cells. But they are not uh, pesce cells. Pesce cells are unitunicate. These are bituminated, but they are apothecoid. Sclerococcum, halotrephum, lecanidium nitratum. And uh, a number of uh, new genera have been uh, uh, introduced by us from myself and uh, Devdetta from Muthupet mangroves like Thyridaerilla uh, with uh, along with the species mangrovi and uh, Mahakoshe and then another uh, genus Sudastrospherilopsis. We named it after the river Kaveri, Kaveriana. And then uh, uh, it is again a privilege for me and uh, my students to uh give um, this uh, name the fungi after uh, our own indian mycologists like professor bpr vital for their contributions to uh, marine mycology so vitaliana mangrove has been raised and also another uh, new genus ragukumaria has been uh, reported by us and uh, morosperia mutupatensis named after the uh, region mutupet mangroves has been reported by us and we also have the honor of honoring uh, Professor Garrett Jones, uh, Phyoseptum Garrett Jones, Phyoseptum Anglicola. These are all the new species reported from India. I was mentioning that the very few species of Basidomyces are uh, reported in mangrove environment because of uh, lack of scope for 
formation of huge fruit bodies but you find a very few basidiomycetes forms forming minute fruit bodies they are very small fruit bodies like this uh, halocyphna villosa but otherwise uh, other mushrooms there is no scope uh, if you take this halocyphna fruit bodies you will find the basidiospores uh, some seven genera are there uh, microscopic uh, basidiomycetes like you have calatella mangrovi on the woody piece uh, which upon examination you will find the basidiospores and uh, the anamorphic fungi which earlier were called as uh, diatromycota mycotina uh, now this uh, usage is no longer there uh, either anamorphic fungi or asexual fungi uh, some of the forms like uh, helicorhida and uh, nipicola on uh, nipafruticans uh, there are 40 genera but uh, i am showing you a few representatives these hyphomyces directly form on the hypha you have trichoderma uh, trichocolidium nipae like this, the Esco, uh, the Conidia, uh, Trichocolidium allopallonellum. So directly rising from the hypha, you also have uh, 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 these uh, forms. Of course, this is Hydia pygmy, uh, earlier called as the Serenalia pygmy. Uh, these hyphomycetes are uh, quite uh, common uh, in marine environment. Some of these forms. You also have some of the silomycetes also recorded from marine uh, environments uh, but uh, they have not shown you there so i will stop here as part of the first session um, and uh, we will have a break here uh, and then uh, uh, dr uh, damodar will announce uh, further announcements thank you sir Makaru. can you hear me yes sir others hope so yeah yeah now we'll open the question and answer session for next 10 to 15 minutes uh, esteemed members of the audience can ask questions um, you can raise your hand or you can type in the chat box you're welcome now yeah. professor Sarmagaro. Yeah, I, I, we are lucky to have uh, uh, differential interference contrast microscope with uh, DAC objectives uh, sponsored by CERB, uh, Science and Engineering Research Board project. Uh, uh, of course, uh, in a different project on Andaman terrestrial fungi, Dascomycetes. Through that project, we got this uh, microscope. Uh, DAC uh, objectives were uh, there in that microscope. Of course, it's a higher end microscope um, with the nine lakhs. If you go for Nikon or Olympics, Olympus, but if you go for Carl J's or Leica, it will be 12 lakhs or more than that. Uh, and uh, the uh, the such uh, higher end uh, microscopes I have used uh, in Dr. Raghukumar's laboratory and Dr. Hyde's laboratory. So some of the those images were captured uh, during that time. So they are a bit old also, but uh, very beautiful pictures. Professor Sarmak, I would like to ask a question. You know, you know, yes. uh, in in a marine environment, there are there are some reports that there are mushroom-like structures. You know, they are they don't belong to the kingdom fungi, but there are mushroom-like structures. They are called sea mushrooms. You know, mm -hmm. why the real uh, mushrooms belonging to kingdom fungi are not reported yet from the marine environment? I'm I'm talking about kind of uh, not uh, estuarine, maybe going away from the coast towards of 200, 300, 400 meter depth. Uh, basically, you don't have substratum. Uh, any any driftwood could be a substratum, but uh, driftwood uh, agitates. You have this uh, seawater wavy in nature. And uh, uh, another thing is that how fully it is exposed to sun. So hot radiation is there, desiccation will be there. And uh, you have only a smaller part uh, uh, submerged, means uh, exposed to the waters. And three fourths it is exposed to the air. And uh, that wavy nature, this uh, uh, desiccation is not suitable for uh, macroscopic uh, those mushroom uh, formations. And uh, the occurrence of this uh, driftwood itself is very rare. 
so you don't have scope for scope for the macroscopic fruit bodies maybe one or two these uh, microscopic basidiomyces that too you find in coastal habitats like mangroves not on driftwood very uh, rare on driftwood sarmagar my question is kind of uh, kind of you know uh, nature's way of you know creating life you know as an architect you know uh, mushroom like structures are found in sea submerged Mm -hmm. But real mushrooms are not found, probably not yet. So no, you, you you don't find uh, mushrooms uh, uh, in the high seas. Uh, that means, uh, uh, but what you find is uh, maybe they are uh, corals because yes, corals uh, look like different kinds of plants, but they are animals. Yes, yes, like yes. that. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's kind of uh, very interesting why that kind of structures are produced by other life forms, but uh, these kind of uh, forms originally in uh, kingdom fungi are not that uh, reported you know from the sea anyway thank you so much uh, uh, dr sashi Rector, yeah uh, good morning to everyone good morning dr shana and good morning dr sharma uh, it's a very nice to attend this uh, talk uh, very interesting uh, incidentally my student is also working on uh, wood rotting fungi in terrestrial part in the Na sanjay gandhi national park but we also cover the nagla block which is uh, touching the coast so I just wanted to know uh, uh, that is it's in the creek, the uh, Basin Creek. So there are some uh, parts which we will be covering also. Uh, I wanted to know how, whether these ascomycids do exist in the, in the submerged condition in the salt water. Would would they exist or uh, there is some uh, kind of a succession that happens in the fungi also over the intertidal zone? Definitely, definitely. If, if they are inundated in this marine waters, definitely you'll find some ascomycids. Um, yeah. you, ha you have to carefully examine them because they are very microscopic in nature. Uh, yeah. In a stereo zoom microscope, you have to scan them patiently uh, uh -huh. because uh, there is every chance of missing them. Many okay. of them are very ti uh, uh, tiny and uh, colorless fruit bodies will be there, highland fruit bodies. Fruit body itself will be highland, so you cannot uh, easily locate them. Yeah. and some of them are deeply seated so on the top uh, you'll find a small indication of or raised bodies that uh -huh. is an indication that something is there within that wood piece unless you cut randomly uh, you cannot make it out uh, so there will be a lot, lot of uh, ascomycids okay okay so even on pneumatophores you it is possible that uh, they could exist pneumatophores uh, mostly they are uh, live uh, unless live. you find a dead uh, pneumatophores uh -huh. uh, you cannot get diversity and uh, I have examined uh, uh, for uh, three or four years during my studies and uh, I didn't find much diversity on pneumatophores okay. because uh, collecting those dead pneumatophores is rare. Most of them are deeply fixed and uh, they are live ones. Uh, right, right. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's, it's going to be a kind of uh, exploration only because I have never gone into the marine thing. It was very interesting to see all those uh, slides which you had shown. It's quite informative. Thank you. Yeah, yes, thank you. Uh, Shovan Rakshid, please ask your question. Dr. Neelam, please ask your question. Hello, sir. Uh, yeah, thank Shovan. you for the wonderful presentation. Thanks to Michael yeah. Sia for arranging this workshop also. So my question is, what is the important application of marine fungi in nowadays going on? Yeah, my next <laughs> session will talk about that there okay, are uh, quite a few areas where the marine fungi are used okay sir okay sir dr neelam please hello good afternoon yeah, yeah good afternoon please ask yeah thank you dr sharma for the wonderful presentation i have two questions the first one is what is the best method to to keep the samples when we want to isolate especially when we go for the cruise for long journey cruise and how we keep this dna yeah and then the second one how to how what is the best uh, media preservation for marine fungi to keep or to maintain this fungi uh to keep the purity identity and availability thank you yeah thank you um we use uh, these uh, plastic bags for initial collections 
uh, and then uh, once you bring back them uh, you have to wash them thoroughly and then uh, uh, transfer a few uh, of those samples to the fresh uh, plastic bags uh, with uh, the small provision these ziplock plastic bags are available uh, in the shops you can get them or uh, the plastic uh, chambers uh, bread boxes we call them uh, you can uh, moisten them uh, frequently with the sterile uh, marine water or sterile digital water uh, but uh, don't flood it um, then uh, you will get uh, those uh, uh, the samples uh, uh, fruity Th that is basically to uh, uh, promote uh, fruition that uh, we uh, do that uh, and the second part of your question is uh, uh, the medium for marine fungi we found malt extract agar uh, one of the best uh, media uh, for isolation of this marine fungi and uh, maintenance uh, you can try that uh, the malt extract agar Dr. Gayatri Nambia, please. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. Um, I would like to know more about the phylogenic studies regarding this marine fungi. Yeah, these uh, the, uh, molecular studies have uh, been uh, only recently they have been undertaken. And uh, most of the studies from this uh, coastal habitats like mangroves or other studies are based on the microscopic identification initially uh, and then confirmation through the molecular studies so both uh, informations are available that is uh, the uh, microscopic features are also available the molecular inputs are available and uh, that is a wonderful combination because uh, you get uh, both uh, uh, inputs available whereas uh, some of these environmental dna uh, of the soils or water uh, they are giving uh, some of the phylotypes uh, which uh, could not be placed anyway any of the existing uh, phyla so uh, recently what they have done is they have raised a new uh, phylum cryptomycota for these uh, cryptic species which are basically coming from environmental dna so uh, more and more people if start they start isolating uh, the means extracting the dna and sequence them and uh, uh, submit the sequence data in the public domain uh, we may be helping those uh, environmental uh, means dna studying uh, people uh, from deep sea or other sediments um, because right now uh, the, the clueless uh, some many of these uh, phylotypes uh, where to place are not there but if we uh, at least uh, sequence these known marine fungi and uh, submit those sequence data in the public domain when they compare from the environmental dna some of our uh, coastal uh, marine fungi may be there otherwise what is happening is most of the Aspergillae penicillin are recorded and other uh, groups uh, could not be placed anywhere. So that is the present status of uh, uh, marine fungi uh, where many uh, uh, hits are there, uh, signatures which uh, uh, show that they are uh, belonging to cryptomycota or some other lower groups of uh, fungi. Uh, whatever that I have shown, you will find only in the coastal habitats, mangroves, corals or other shoreline plants. Professor Sarma, can I add one point here? Yes, sir. For the I mean, latest updates on the molecular phylogenetic studies on marine fungi, maybe mm -hmm. audience can refer to Professor uh, the refer to the website maintained by Professor Garrett Jones. I think I saw that this is quite up to date, and uh, they they have given links to the references also. Yeah, he he is constantly updating the website with the information. Okay, thank you, uh, Sazina, please. Uh, good morning, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, I missed some part of my presentation. Uh, I want to ask that uh, the marine fungi, it grows on the top of the water, on the surface of the water, or deep in the sea? No, no. Uh, in waters, you don't find, except uh, some spores. Uh, whatever I have presented is uh, from diversity from uh, on the mangrove plant substrata uh, in the okay. coastal habitats. In the high seas, you don't have a uh, substrata. Uh. Availability of substrata is a very big problem uh, because you have unicellular algae uh, in the phytoplankton region. Um, so mostly uh, they are live unicellular algal cells. Unless they are dead, you don't find the saprophytic mode of life of this marine fungi. And uh, the unicellular algae doesn't offer a very good substratum for the filamentous fungi. So uh, either you will have some thrastrochytes or yeast colonizing those dead unicellular algal cells but uh, there is no scope for uh, hypha or mycelium formation 
on such a small uh, algal cell. So you have to either come to the coastal habitats like mangroves or shoreline plants, or if you go to the sediments, the benthic region in the bottom of the bed, uh, again, you will find some of those aspergillae and penicillite uh, with uh, spores. Uh, and when you isolate in the artificial media, then they will start uh, forming those uh, hyphal uh, mycelia. But uh, in the uh, particular environment, Maybe they are functionally active with a little bit formation of the hyphae and immediately switch over to those spores, uh, which we call as uh, microcycle conidiation. The conidia forming smaller conidia and then again uh, it, the cycle continues, the reproductive cycle with the scope for hyphal formation is very minimal. Yes. Thank you, sir. Show that picture, please. Anita Parsekar, please. Hello. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Ah, sir, I, you have been in a newly stage, uh, producing the new genus now that Vitaliana and uh, Ragumarian, uh, Ragukumariansis. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That was the new genus is erecting any botanical nomenclature rules. I mean, how do you create you, sir, that much of the new genus in naming on the scientist's name? Yeah, see, most of the time we try to uh, reflect on the morphological features of the particular uh, new taxon so that it communicates to the uh, scientific world. This is the character of this uh, fungus. So, uh, a curvate is spora, that means the spores are curved. That is 90%, 80% people do that. But uh, it is also a good opportunity to uh, honor some of the scientists who have contributed a lot to a particular branch of study. For example, marine mycology, uh, the Professor Vittal and Raghupumar have contributed a lot and uh, it, it is honor to honor them. It is my honor to honor them. So there is no hard and fast rule. You can give such names uh, like uh, Muthupetensis means uh, named after the particular place. Singaporeansis, Australiansis, Hawaiiansis. Uh, like that, when why not uh, from our own rivers or uh, places? We can give no problem. And many of the Sanskrit names are given by Professor C. V. Subramanian. The same characters in Sanskrit. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Anita, Pastikar, please. Manohar Raju, please. Darshan, please. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Good afternoon. So thank you, sir, for uh, excellent presentation. This is uh, one of the new way of uh, exposing the, as we are coming from plant uh, background, uh, it is a new of, uh, presentation to expose to the mellow fungi, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And my question is that any of these fungi which are exploited for uh, uh, management of the plant disease are either stress tolerance in the plant, sir. Um, because, uh, because uh, you, you have a you lot have of a uh, terrestrial fungi like trichodermas which are used in biocontrol. Uh, the problem with marine fungi is uh, they are very slow growing, so they are not fast growing. And uh, maintenance in artificial media, you have to supply the sodium chloride, 50% sodium chloride, and then uh, uh, they are slow growers, so that would be one of the problems. Uh, but otherwise. Some of the metabolites, enzymes, uh, I'll be discussing in the afternoon session. Okay, sir. Suppose, sir, if you if you collect these fungi and uh, apply it in the new ecosystem, whether it will be uh, able to adapt to the new ecosystem, sir? Oh, that's the problem. No, they are used to the halophilic conditions, sodium chloride. And if you supply sodium chloride uh, to few generations, they will survive. But uh, again, uh, slow growing. Uh, that is one of the problems. But those marine derived fungi like Aspergillus pencilium, uh, they can be established very well, uh, even under uh, uh, artificial conditions also. Because our intention is to expose these fungi to salt affected areas. Yeah, because they're already trained with uh, growing in the salt conditions. So salt affected mm -hmm. areas, no problem. Okay, sir. But it will adapt. Yes, it is the system, it will adapt. New yeah, ecosystem. it will adapt. It will adapt. Uh, if it is a salt, uh, you said the salt environment. So 
they they can they should survive but again as i said uh, most of these marine fungi what i have shown those typical marine fungi they are very slow growers uh, exceptions maybe there one or two but uh, in general they are slow growers okay. in artificial media anita parsekar if you are here please ask the question Okay, uh, her question is, uh, Professor Samagaru, are there any morphological changes observed in a particular facultative marine fungus when isolated from the fresh water and marine environment? environments? I hope, I hope you got the question. Yeah, no, there is no much difference except that the sodium chloride. So aquatic environment makes them to develop those appendages and uh, sheaths. That is uh, a common uh, uh, adaptation for both the conditions which we call it as uh, commonly aquatic if you separate them freshwater and marine uh, but otherwise uh, freshwater fungi you have plenty of uh, those uh, uh, forms of uh, appendages and the sheets those adaptations are common to both marine and freshwater Oh, thank you, Professor Sharma, for answering all these questions. We will now take a break for five minutes, and after that, we'll be back for the next part of the workshop. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, um, in the morning uh, part of the session, uh, I have mentioned that uh, the scope for marine fungi is less uh, um, and uh, most of those fungi what uh, i have shown are from the coastal habitats like uh, mangroves shoreline plants etc are a rare chance of those uh, driftwoods and uh, accordingly uh, the marine fungi constitute only a meager one percent of the described fungal species and uh, are still poorly characterized uh, we have more than 150 000 uh, fungi and um, you can see the number of marine fungi are roughly around a thousand and odd and most of the studies on marine fungi were conducted from coastal habitats including driftwood mangrove substrata seaweeds etc uh, for direct examination method or culturing of water sediment and uh, sea foam etc and uh, these studies have shown that uh, we have already seen that ascomycota dominating and very few basidiomyces and anamorphic fungi are there. Uh, <laughs> and in the recent times, the culture independent studies have been started after the advent of uh, molecular uh, uh, tools uh, come into that. And uh, but way back in 79, uh, the low diversity and abundance of marine taxa and open sea waters made Kulmere and Kulmere to opine that open oceans are by and large a fungal desert. That means that we don't find any fungi in the open seas. But then recent culture independent methods such as environmental cloning and next generation sequencing, these studies reveal a substantially unknown fungal diversity in different habitats that belong not only to known fungal lineages but also to several entirely new clades that are that are not known and those uh, unknown uh, sequences uh, in the diverse fungal tree are termed as dark matter fungi um, and uh, Richards uh, who has done uh, uh, Richards et al who have done the molecular uh, uh, diversity studies on marine fungi uh, they also found a very low diversity in both uh, diversity and abundance and the great majority of isolates from culture independent studies belong to jusporic fungi. Whereas uh, the coastal habitats, we found that they belong to Ascomegata. Uh, uh, the culture independent studies show jusporic fungi such as uh, Blastocladiomycota, Chytridiomycota, Cryptomycota, Neocalistocalimastogomycota, uh, uh, of course, the genus Olpidium and the Zygomycota lineages like uh, Entomophthoromycota, Kixellomycota, Marshallomycota, Mugoromycota, and Jupagomycota. And many of these groups of fungi are microscopic and have fastidious nutrition requirements, thus making their uh, isolation difficult. Uh, in some of these questions, uh, my answer was that they are slow growers. And uh, the fast growers outcompete these slow growers during your isolation attempts 
like uh, any pass as we just penicillin or trichoderma they will prop up and then mask the entire plate you will not get the slow growers there is no uh, scope in the competitive mode for these slow growers to uh, uh, get isolated and separated so in fact the newly described phylum cryptomycota was introduced based on phylotypes recovered solely from environmental surveys environmental dna so the role of marine fungi in environment um, in addition to wood borers and uh, bacteria fungi are major decomposers of woody and herbaceous substrata entering into marine ecosystem so they belong to this detritus cycle as decomposers and uh, they can grow on wood sediments they are found in sediments algae dead corals calcareous tubes of mollusks decaying leaves seedlings prop roots nutophores intertidal grasses any dead organic matter in the marine environment uh, organic matter and they play an important role in the production of organic detritus, supporting a large animal community, including commercial fisheries, uh, where they act as breeding and nursery grounds. And basically, the role is in the nutrient regeneration, regeneration cycles as decomposers of uh, dead and decaying organic matter. And the yeast and thrastochytes uh, have been found to be more abundant in the high seas or open sea waters. As I mentioned, when you have unicellular algae as the uh, most widely abundant, readily available substratum in the open sea, uh, only the yeast, unicellular yeast, and uh, small organisms like this, the thrastrocytes, can survive. There is no scope for uh, filamentous fungi to form those mycelia or those fruit bodies. So they are more prominent. These filamentous fungi are more prominent in coastal habitats such as mangroves, uh, where there is plenty of angiosperm biomass available that too inundated in seawater. Many of the parts are most of the time. And in the open seas, the primary producers are small and unicellular, uh, lacking complex energy, nutrient, they, are, they don't have nutrient-rich compounds, and there is no proper support or anchorage for uh, other filamentous fungi to colonize and uh, the type of fungal history that uh, i have shown you are in the land or in the mangroves is largely missing in the open seas instead as the open seas have only used a lot photo uh, synthetic organisms and phagotrophic grazers in the surface waters the diversity and abundance of detrital microbiota develop according to this trophic relationship which is very low that's what i have shown the yeast and the thrastrocytes are more suited uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, for survival in that uh, open sea. But as the depth increases uh, uh, crossing the photo zone, you have this particle matter reaching the sediment, uh, so getting sedimented, and uh, you have the saprophytes, uh, uh, including fungi, uh, uh, processing the detritus. Uh, that is how we have a number of aspergillus and penicillium recorded uh, from those uh, sediments in the deep sea environments which have a functional role active role in degrading uh, and most of the fungi reported to be predominantly active eukaryotic microbes in these environments biodeterioration as i already mentioned any untreated piece of wood or boat they will be colonized by marine fungi. They will be attacked by marine fungi. Of course, you will also find other uh, micro zones, meso zones, or these barnacles also attacking the uh, ship uh, structures, ship wreckage. And they are aided by these marine fungi also in the uh, biodeterioration. As far as uh, marine uh, fungi and their biotechnological potential, uh, as I said, if you have a wood piece and lignin content is there, in the terrestrial environment, invariably you will find the basidiomycetes occupying them and then degrading them, the lignosin. Because the lignocellulose uh, matrix has lignin, uh, hemicellulose, and uh, cellulose, and you require uh, enzymes like xylenases and lignin modifying enzymes uh, uh, to degrade them. So, lignocellulosic uh, uh, degrading enzymes are used in waste bioconversion, uh, for example, ethyl alcohol production also in the terrestrial environments, uh, biopulping in the paper industry, biobleaching paper industry, 
and any other <coughs> bioremediation technology. Sorry. So this is the situation in the case of uh, terrestrial environments. And uh, in the terrestrial environments, it is well established that uh, white rot fungi are capable of producing the, all these class of uh, lignolytic enzymes, like uh, lacases, lignin peroxidases, and manganese-dependent peroxidases. But as I already repeated uh, several times, there is no scope for uh, large macroscope uh, fruit body forming mycetes uh, that grow on the driftwood or uh, wood uh, submerged in the coastal environments to produce lignocellulitic, I mean, lignocellulitic enzymes. Because you don't have mycetes as uh, competitors, uh, the marine ascomycetes fungi have adopted or evolved in such a way that they can produce these lignin degrading enzymes. If you see basically the terrestrial environment, most of these lignin degrading enzymes are produced by the basidiomyces. All these are basidiomyces, macroscopic fruit body forming. Either mushrooms or those bracket fungi belonging to aphylophorales. However, some basidiomyces, uh, maybe in the form of uh, the hypha, etc., also have shown some promising uh, this thing. So lignolytic and xylenolytic enzymes from terrestrial fungi have found their way into a variety of potential biotechnology applications in biobleaching, biopulping, and bioremediation technologies. We have few reports available that show marine fungi also have such uh, capabilities. For example, decolorization of paper mill bleach effluents. See, this uh, paper mill uh, bleach uh, uh, means uh, they use a lot of uh, chemical bleaching agents but then you, if you uh, allow those uh, um, uh, effluents to release in the environment they can cause a lot of pollutions so some of these marine fungi uh, for example a marine uh, basidiomycete flowered on flowers has been found to be decolorized the paper mill bleach effluent and also uh, synthetic dye decolorization capabilities have been reported and this fung particular fungus also has been shown to have a potential in simultaneous detoxification and decolorization of molasses paint wash by immobilizers uh, and removing the colored pollutants in the paper industry. Now, remember, all these studies were uh, conducted by uh, Dr. Kumar in his lab uh, at uh, National Institute of Oceanography, Donopola, Goa. A very few fire studies have been conducted on biotechnological applications of marine fungi, and their laboratory has uh, studied a lot on this marine fungal uh, potential, biotechnology potential in various applications. It has also been reported that the crude fulcher filtrate of a marine fungal isolate uh, has a thermostable, cellulase free, alkaline cellulase. Now, in again, uh, this uh, the paper industry, if you want the biopulping and biobleaching, uh, those bio-bleaching agents should have a xylenase which should be cellulose free because you want to preserve cellulosic microfibrils in the paper industry should not be degraded and uh, many of them add sodium hydroxide during the bio pulping so your xylenase which is going to bleach should have alkaline tolerancy and also should be thermostable because in the uh, boilers they heat uh, those wooden chopped pieces at 180 degrees celsius and when it comes reaches 60 degrees or 70 degrees after four or five hours <coughs> sorry your xylenase should be still uh, uh, capable of uh, having activity that means it should be thermostable so with this kind of uh, qualities uh, a fungal marine fungal isolate has been recorded by rakumar et al in 2004 and they found uh, uh, a very good uh, activity two four five seven units of uh, this uh, uh, xylenase activity in bio bleaching of paper pulp. So these few studies indicate that there is a good potential for uh, further exploration of this marine fungi. Of course, uh, a few people uh, during screening activities have also reported other enzymes like amylase, catenase, uh, so many other enzymes also. But a considerable uh, amount of work has been done on the lignocellulitic uh, uh, enzymes. As far as bioactive compounds are uh, concerned, uh, marine derived fungi seem to be better candidates for uh, these uh, bioactive compounds when compared to typical marine fungi. The reason is the um, isolation, identification of typical marine fungi is not so easy. Whereas when you 
uh, plate the soils or sea water, you'll get a lot of asbestos and penicillin species with very good activities and production of biotic compounds. Unlike those typical marine fungi, which I have shown in this morning's lecture, isolation itself is very difficult, maintenance is difficult, and they are very slow girls. Any small mistake, you will get a fast growing one will contaminate that. So due to those uh, uh, drawbacks, many people have not studied this typical marine fungi, but they have considered more on marine derived fungi, which invariably indicates the aspergill and penicillin. The difficulty in raising pure cultures and few experts on the uh, typical marine fungi. These are the, and the lack of funding also one of the problems that uh, uh, this group has been neglected for uh, bioactive compounds. A wide range of activities have been identified from marine fungi. Uh, whatever studies, as I said, they are from marine derived fungi, most of them, and they have shown antibacterial, anti-diabetic, anti-fungal, anti-inflammatory, all these activities have been uh, uh, studied. Uh, initially, uh, they have been shown some uh, positive indication. So the uh, expectation is that the marine fungi uh, survive under uh, what you call stress conditions like high salinity, ultraviolet light uh, exposition, low temperatures, and limited access to nutrients and substrates for growth, and even extreme hydrostatic pressure. So these are the uh, what you call uh, unfavorable conditions, and uh, that maybe that is the reason uh, one can expect some good uh, amount of bioactive compounds from this marine fungi, which may be of uh, therapeutic use. Now, although over a thousand marine fungi based metabolites have already been uh, reported, none of them have reached the market, uh, which could partly be related to non comprehensive screening approaches and lack of uh, sustained lead optimization. Now, uh, after initial reporting, some from those marine samples, or marine soil or water samples, uh, sc screening activities, they just report and then forget about it. There is no further uh, uh, work on that or uh, sustained efforts of lead optimization. And uh, despite the increasing number of uh, novel uh, marine natural products being reported for from J, uh, particularly in the recent uh, three decades, to date only the broad spectrum cephalosporin can be traced back as marine fungal derived drug that is widely uh, in the market. So cephalosporins were isolated in the early 1940s uh, from a strain of acrimonium chrysogenum obtained in a small uh, sample collected in sewage water in the Sardinian coast Mediterranean Sea. Up to some 27 uh, fungal metabolites were reported uh, from marine fungi uh, up to 1992. Later on, when uh, Bugni and Ireland reviewed, uh, there are uh, more than uh, 270 compounds were reported from marine fungi, and another 100 uh, in 2005 when uh, salimetal was uh, classified. And then the following uh, five year period between 2006 to 2010, another 690 natural products from marine fungi were added. Now, most of the marine based drugs have come from invertebrates. So, marine environment, we have marine bacteria, marine fungi, and uh, marine animals. And most of the drugs uh, from uh, marine environment are coming from these invertebrates like sponges, tunicates, mollusks, and bryogens, uh, bryogens. Um, and uh, they are mostly the non reversible peptides. So, Deshmukh et al. has reviewed uh, on this. And a few of them have already reached the market, like uh, polymyxin B, pristonimycin, uh, gramycidin, vancomycin, biomycin, actinomycin. But you can see that they are not from marine fungi, but uh, these uh, marine invertebrates. So though you have more, more than 1,000 metabolites, uh, <coughs> none of them have reached the uh, market. Uh, and Deshmukh et al. attribute this partly to lack of systematic and comprehensive approaches, as well as lack of optimization, and which has precluded a large number of potential hits from becoming actual drugs. That means it requires a sustained efforts, a funding, support, and uh, uh, scientists contributing in this area. Uh, as far as uh, endophytic fungi, we, we all know the, that uh, the, the 
of course, like a classic example of this uh, taxomyces is Andriana having anti cancer compounds. And uh, the fungus, which is uh, growing uh, endobiotically inside the leaves of this plant, or uh, pestiloceps, is also producing the compound that the host produces. And uh, once uh, this uh, news was uh, reported, many people tried uh, endophytic fungi from different plants, and uh, such. Uh, efforts are uh, uh, attempted in the marine environment also uh, not only from plant sources but also macroalgae and sea grasses which harbor endophytic fungi and they have been screened so marine derived fungi uh, were isolated mostly from this endophytic fungal group in sponges and algae so among various uh, substrata uh, from where these uh, marine fungi have been isolated, uh, you have most of the compounds from marine fungi isolated from sponges, followed by algae, then wood, and uh, other uh, substrata. Similarly, new compounds also mostly came from marine fungi isolated from sponges. These are supposed to be endophytic fungi within the sponges or algae that have been isolated and screened for uh, metabolites. And the novelty is uh, uh, more from the sponges and algae than other substrata. And even the number of uh, marine fungal uh, genera, of course, these are all known marine fungal genera. Uh, sponges uh, accommodate more or offer a substratum for more number of these uh, uh, genera when compared to algae, wood. And... These are not a typical marine fungi. <coughs> And the number of new compounds reported annually, of course, uh, earlier slide I have shown. Uh, this is annual uh, report of these compounds from marine fungi, uh, 31, 38. Slowly but steadily, the, the number is increasing. And uh, Holler et al. has reported that most of these uh, 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 compounds are coming from this uh, fungi isolated from algae and uh, sponges. And invariably, they have a terrestrial origin, uh, aspergillus, penicillium, that we are producing these bioactive compounds. Like Emericella, very color in Venezuela, uh, which produces the compounds very triol that has potency towards uh, some renal, central nervous system, breast cancer lines, another fungus, Vardomyces anomalous produces xanthone derivatives that showed antioxidant and uh, tyrosine kinase. Now this watomyces is again uh, uh, anamorphic fungus or asexual fungus uh, called hyphomyces earlier. Now the problem is why people are not attempting the, with the typical marine fungi. Although 530 typical ma marine fungi were occurring up to 2009 and this number has increased of course uh, later on by 2000. Uh, 20, this number should be more than 750 or 800, uh, excluding aspergillus and penicillium. Uh, not many uh, reports are available from these typical marine fungi, but still we have some studies conducted which show that uh, some compounds, uh, interesting compounds, interesting studies are there. Isocolmarin produced by Calichromatethes, Sicane produced by Halosifnovillosa, uh, Helicoscoral. So you have uh, some of these uh, marine fungi producing different uh, uh, compounds. <clears throat> now, in addition to this uh, uh, marine fungi, uh, some of the other uh, groups of uh, fung uh, fungi-like organisms, like thrastrochaetids, which were earlier studied by mycologists, uh, fu uh, fungi people, are no longer taken by other uh, mycologists. Uh, and, and hence, we have very few uh, mycologists attempting to study on the thrastrochaetids as a group. Uh, Dr. Ravu Kumar has spent uh, uh, several decades and, uh, on this group and contributed enormously on uh, this uh, uh, thrastrochaetids, their biology, their taxonomy, their biotechnological applications, every aspect of uh, thrastrochaetids working at the National Institute of Oceanography. And we don't have, again, uh, the experts on thrastrochaetids uh, after his retirement. Uh, maybe uh, I think Varda uh, Damare has taken up and uh, she she is uh, 
continuing the studies on thrastrophytes. And the specialty of these thrastrophytes is that they produce uh, the uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids. Uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids, including this docosopentaenoic acid, <coughs> are, sorry, are produced, uh, the source is actually marine fishes. And uh, uh, the problem with marine fishes is that uh, uh, typical smell, uh, which may not be appealing to many vegetarians. Um, so uh, for them, we have other sources like marine microalgae, which are also produce uh, this DHA and uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids. But then marine microalgae occupy a lot of uh, area in terms of uh, ponds to be constructed for them to be grown. Whereas these uh, thrastrophytes are heterotrophs, they can be taken to a fermenter and then uh, uh, make them produce this uh, omega-3 fatty acid uh, production. So among the different genera, you have Cyzocatrium and uh, Thrastrocatrium, uh, which are used uh, industrially, uh, belonging to this uh, Thrastrocatriaceae family. And uh, DHA is uh, uh, both uh, used by human beings and also it is used in the aquaculture industry as feed to the um, uh, juveniles, uh, fishes, fish, uh, the uh, prawn cultivation. And also in human being consumption, DHA is very good for memory power. And uh, of course, uh, any uh, polyunsaturated fatty acid is good for uh, human beings. So uh, there is a huge potential on this. Maybe I reserve uh, the uh, remaining uh, uh, on this DHA and thrastrocytes. Maybe at one point of time, uh, Dr. Varda Samare uh, would uh, throw more light on this. Similarly, uh, I have not uh, gone uh, in depth into the deep sea stud fungal studies because uh, Dr. Samir, uh, at, maybe he will be giving a lecture on this uh, topic on deep sea fungi, uh, which uh, they have conducted uh, a lot of studies and uh, uh, have a lot of information to be shared. Uh, I hope uh, my is uh, 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 providing a platform for that. So with this, uh, uh, I <coughs> acknowledge and thank Professor BPR Vittal, late Professor BPR Vittal for introducing me into marine mycology and also Dr. Uh, Raghu Kumar and Dr. Hyde, KD Hyde for uh, fine tuning my thoughts, abilities and uh, 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 means studies and marine fungi. And uh, I thank profusely the Minister of Earth Sciences for an earlier project and also for the ongoing project. In the earlier project, Devdita has worked with me and some of those photographs have come from that work. Uh, I thank the Microasia uh, for providing me this opportunity to share my experiences on marine fungi. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Sama. Thank you. Uh, it was a wonderful second half. Uh, we would uh, now request the audience to raise their hand if they have any questions. Please. Yeah, yes, please. Mr. Sridhar Peter, do you have a question now? No? No, sir. Okay. Sir, I have one question, sir. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Uh, sir. Uh, sir, yes, we are uh, using uh, red weed. What is that? Uh, red seed weed, sir, from the marine fungi. Uh, for we, that red sea weed extract, we are importing sea weed extract from other countries. Why it is uh, in, we don't have any source of sea weed extracts in India, sir? Regarding this, I want to know about this. Sir. Humic acid from red algae. Yes, sir. Is that what? Okay, okay. See, uh, basically yes, they are yes, uh, uh, they are photosynthetic and produce a lot of carbohydrate content and. Uh, Upon degradation, they can be used for humic acid. That means they serve as uh, uh, organic manure. So you are talking about algae, no? Algae yes, source. Yes, yeah. That can be used as uh, yes, manure. Because all this... Sir, we are using for the... 
you are we are using that one for uh, humic acid uh, as a organic stimulant sir in agriculture but uh, we are importing many of seed weed extract from other countries uh, red weed uh, that red seed weed extract from other country not from india i am just asking sir why it is uh, even we don't have any source of red, red that uh, seaweed from in india i am asking about uh, the sources okay under natural Then conditions under natural conditions you have to go to the coast and collect them uh, but there is a possibility of cultivating them also uh, in the coastal regions employing the fishermen uh, but then the cultivation uh, has to be undertaken by somebody you have this uh, pepsi or somebody in uh, southern tamil nadu coast they are cultivating uh, a particular uh, hypnia i think one alga so uh, unless such okay. efforts are there you have to import from outside only but it has nothing okay, to do sir. with uh, marine fungi okay sir means i just want to know sir is there any specific constraints uh, that we are not taking why we are not taking in indian oceans you show the demand and potential somebody will take interest okay sir i will contact sir thank you sir yeah yeah okay now raj please ask your question Professor Sharma, Akila has a question. She is asking, as the marine fungi have so many useful usefulness or users in medical field, any extracts are being used commercially for that? I think she is trying to ask uh, the potential of marine fungi in medical field. Yeah, most of them have been screened, and after screening, nobody is taking it further because you have several stages. pre-clinical stages and then uh, uh, clinical stage 1 2 3 4 before reaching the market so sustained efforts are missing uh, after initial uh, screening they just report uh, my extract has this activity or that activity and then it is not taken up further and maybe that slow growing uh, nature is one of the reasons for the typical marine fungi as far as uh, other fast growing fungi marine derived fungi like aspergillus penicillium uh, uh, the sustained efforts are not there maybe lack of uh, funding or uh, support we don't know but uh, unless it is taken up by industry seriously you will not find uh, things taking into shape Um, Professor Sharma, I would like to ask one question now. Uh, I mean, what would be your advice to a beginner in marine fungi? Like, uh, what would be the top three research topics he could consider if he has to, if he is uh, starting his career in marine fungi? Because you have seen marine fungi, the research on marine fungi for last yeah. almost twenty-five years, I believe. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, <coughs> diversity um, we have uh, surveyed uh, the coast like um, uh, andhra tamil nadu coast have uh, been uh, surveyed to a large extent uh, of course uh, sundarbans uh, huge potential for diversity uh, of same is uh, the case uh, with uh, orissa but uh, uh, orissa you have those uh, crocodiles and uh, sundarbans you have those bengal tiger great bengal tiger and uh, in the gujarat coast we have some other problems Uh, maybe border problems and uh, the west coast has been uh, thoroughly uh, surveyed uh, by professor sridhar and uh, bd bose uh, so as far as mangroves are concerned uh, andaman is one area which has not been explored and uh, that uh, we have started uh, molecular studies are of very recent in origin uh, of course uh, <clears throat> dr ukumar has initiated from the nao which is being continued by dr samir uh as far as uh, deep sea fungal studies and uh, uh, uh culture independent studies are concerned uh, we are from our laboratory we are uh, isolating those uh, marine fungi with the single spore isolations and then uh, sequencing them uh, so that uh, uh, we are contributing a lot on the um, particular marine fungus from the wood source in, it, it instead of uh, uh culture independent studies these are culture dependent studies of those uh, lignin uh, lignin degrading fungi uh if a similar efforts are there elsewhere also uh, there will be a huge contribution for uh, molecular uh, um, taxonomy of these marine fungi that is one thing so as far as uh, sundarbans um, orissa are concerned it is uh, still fresh uh, anybody can try 
and uh, as far as the physiological and biotechnological studies are uh, concerned uh, there is a huge potential for enzymes um, particularly those deep sea fungi uh, they have i think uh, some of the reports suggest uh, they have very good uh, enzymes uh, so from enzyme uh, biotechnological applications that is one thing uh, because only uh, lignocellulitic uh, capability has been explored not with the other enzymes and uh, these bioactive compounds one of the reasons uh, many people are not uh, undertaking is number one the, uh, the 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 identification part because uh, they have to spend a lot of time with uh, training and uh, locating those marine fungi and those samples isolate them and after all those efforts so some of them may not be fast growing um, they are slow growers and uh, the slow growers one of the disadvantages that uh, during competition they will be knocked out by the fast growers and uh, another thing is after a repeated subculturing you may lose the viability and uh, they don't uh, grow further some of these problems are faced uh, with uh, marine fungi but uh, that doesn't mean that uh, one should not explore so there is a huge potential for these uh, typical marine fungi to be isolated and screened for the compounds so structural elucidation the, their chemistry has to be studied if you find a novel drug you always have the uh, chemosynthetic route that means by combinatorial chemistry where you have a number of chemicals added and you can uh, mimic that chemical which you found from this marine fungi uh, through your uh, screening activity so even if your marine fungus is not growing fast in a fermenter you have that chemosynthetic route where the chemist will produce your drug but those chemists should uh, have the clue about the structure of the compound and that structure can be given by these marine fungi uh, even though so they are slow growers you can still grow them extract them and then uh, go for their structural addition once you provide that structure the other people chemistry people can mimic that and then produce that drug that is one thing and another thing is uh, only uh, the antibacterial has been studied you have a number of other uh, uh, other activities like anti-diabetic those activities can also be studied like in the review of this uh, dr deshmukh uh, we need sustain efforts after initial reports of some activity uh, that uh, extract or other thing no more further studies are undertaken uh, we need the funding we need a sustain efforts a sustainable efforts uh, for taking it further uh, so that the drug can be uh, produced in, the, uh, in reaching the market stage that is one thing another thing is these uh, uh, culture independent studies we need uh, more to study uh, like uh, the, the the nao group uh, which is studying the uh, arabian sea the deep sea fungi you can also concentrate on the coastal environment also like mangroves you have mangrove water mangrove uh, sediments and uh, we can see whether these typical marine fungi are uh, uh, found in those uh, uh, analysis or you still find this aspergillus penicillin and dominating because since mangrove hosts are supporting this typical marine fungi one can expect more of them than the routine aspergillus penicillium in the environmental dna samples that's what uh, but uh, the through studies uh, uh, we will be it will be interesting to see that uh, but for that uh, you need more and more typical marine fungi uh, screen, uh, molecular studies and then their sequence data available in the public domain so that uh, one can compare with those unknown uh, sequence data whether they are matching with the known uh, marine fungi uh, that is one the thing and many of these marine fungi do not sporulate in the artificial culture media uh, neither the asexual spores nor sexual spores so easily so uh, any spore relation studies would be a, a great contribution um, in the early uh, marine mycologists what they used to do is they just cut uh, the match sticks and then uh, drop into those uh, um, the bottles or whatever uh, container your flask uh, and then uh, with the support of the, uh, that match stick or other sticks the fruit bodies of ascomycetes they are tiny fruit bodies they are formed so they used to uh, uh, promote fru fruition through those match sticks or other sticks such uh, studies have to be revived so that uh, under artificial conditions how marine fungi form fruit bodies uh, can also be studied so there are some other such areas where we can concentrate on marine fungi so taxonomy is fairly okay uh, 
so now it is time for the physiology and biotechnology of the Wow, thank you, Dr. Sharma. I mean, if uh, a beginner uh, just goes through uh, goes through the last 10 minutes of this uh, workshop, he, he would get lots of insights, he would get uh, lots of uh, guidance about you know, marine fund research. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Dr. Sonia Chadda has a question for you. Dr. Chadda, would you like to ask? Okay, she has typed in the chat box. So, which is the most ancient marine fungus? Can you please throw some light on the origin of marine fungi? Marine fungi, uh, aquatic uh, mode uh, means uh, origin. Uh, some people suggest, like uh, Colmere and others, uh, who say red algal origin. And uh, but the the the, the uh, uh, what do you call these uh, filaments or uh, the flagella? Flagellar fungi are ancient and uh, you have this cryptomycota uh, newly formed group which are only from phyllo types we don't have their morphology how they look like we don't have any idea but uh, invariably in environmental samples you would uh, get those uh, signatures of uh, this cryptomycota since we could not place them anywhere they are placed under cryptomycota uh, unless we find a formula nutrient formula in future how to grow them we cannot see their mycelia or anything. We don't have any information on that, but they are a little bit closer to fungi and hence placed under cryptomycota. But otherwise, these flagellar fungi are ancient, like uh, catidomycetes or uh, the thrastrocytes, etc. They are ancient. <coughs> Debashis, please. Yeah. Good afternoon, Dr. Damodar. Good afternoon, Dr. Sarma. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, sir, you have excellently elaborated uh, about the marine fungi. So my question is, uh, are they directly related to human uh, uh, for diseases, for disease spreading? Are they zoonotic or are they directly transmit diseases to human beings? Uh, as far as human beings or animals are concerned, fungal diseases are very few and most of them are skin diseases, dermatophilic. Even uh, sir, the, yeah, even I can the, understand. Oh. I, I'm uh, asking about marine fungi. Uh, I have heard about the diseases of, of fish and selfish caused by marine fungi. Hmm. But uh, are they directly involved with the human beings by genetic or directly? Uh, that's what I'm explaining to you. So, <laughs> okay. mostly these uh, uh, human diseases, fungi, you find in dermatophilic. Uh, dermatophilic, uh, yeah. uh, there was a skin diseases. Interestingly, yes, yes. in our studies, we found some of those uh, skin disease causing fungi in mangrove uh, environment. We have reported. And also, there are already some reports uh, from marine environment where you have this, uh, um, this uh, skin disease causing fungi. Uh, but uh, we found them growing as saprophytes or in the saprophytic um, So when we isolated, we got this uh, pseudosporium and some of those uh, other fungi, uh, which were reported, uh, uh, a few other fungi, which were normally reported as skin disease causing, uh, dermatophilic fungi. But okay. to, our, to our surprise, we, got, we have encountered them in the mangroves. So uh, we published a paper also uh, asking the question, are these uh, uh, skin disease causing fungi overwintering in mangroves? That was the question we posed. Uh, we are seeking answers. And we also conducted uh, some preliminary studies. And uh, uh, some of them have half potential to cause diseases, not fully. So uh, we need further studies. And uh, by this time, I think four or five such uh, skin disease causing fungi are reported from this uh, uh, marine environment. Okay, sir, I do understand, but I exactly don't understand how they spread exactly. How they? How they spread to human beings. Oh, you are asking how the skin diseases are spread on human diseases. Yes, yes, yes. yes. What is the route of transmission exactly? By uh, eating selfish, eating fishes, or by direct involvement, uh, which uh, generally go through the uh, sea. Which, uh, who are working in the sea areas? Mostly those fishermen uh, who are exposed to those marine waters, 
uh, if you yeah. have those fungi like medicopsis, parathyroid, uh, etc., their exposure mm -hmm. to the skin uh, makes them because the, mostly it is a topical entry. So okay. that is one route. One route. And so if, if you are going swimming and etc., uh, or your boats uh, okay. going into those regions, but uh -huh. uh, the chance occurrence is very less. Their diversity is very less. We have reported okay. uh, one or two diseases, three, I think, marine fungi, which, which cause uh, such in the ter terrestrial environment. They are known uh, fungi which cause diseases, but these seem to be not uh, so uh, virulent or aggressive uh, as for our initial studies. Okay, sir. Are they invad invading the skins or uh, their route of transmission is via inhaling or uh, by uh, uh, food and contaminated food and drink? Food and drink, I don't think uh, they, they enter uh, because anything that goes into the intestine gets digested. So it should be topical entry. Okay. Topical entry. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Darshan, please. Sir, any good uh, any good database to study the volatiles and non-volatile metabolites of these fungi, sir? Any good database? Open database. Uh, open database, I doubt, but... Uh, if you have uh, any GCMS uh, uh, facility, uh, they come with a uh, library uh, for these metabolites. So uh, that would be expensive. Uh, you have to buy that library. Uh, sir, if it is okay, sir, with the volatiles GCMS for non volatiles, uh, I'm asking about non volatiles, sir. If suppose I want to identify some metabolites, which database is good to study uh, this type of uh, fungi metabolites, sir? I have not studied the, uh, into the, much into that, but okay, uh, based on the previous reports only, uh, you can uh, go through that and then uh, uh, whatever standard uh, protocols or standard methods are there. Okay, I am so basically a uh, biodiversity person entering into this uh, biotechnology. We are screening fungi, I uh, mean uh, enzymes and also uh, the metabolites. Uh, so we have initially studied the anti sensing properties of this marine fungi, and uh, we use uh, GC mess data. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, any more questions to Professor Sharma? Sir, one general question, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, you have mentioned about the uh, areas where the beginners should uh, focus on. Could you please also mention about the current trends of marine fungal study in India? Uh, current trend. Um, most of the uh, scientists, marine mycologists have retired. Uh, so I am the one who is studying this marine fungi from East Coast. Uh, otherwise, uh, I don't think from East Coast uh, any other laboratories uh, involved and from west coast uh, dr samir laboratory they are involved in uh, deep sea studies and uh, um, dr shana is uh, damodar is a facultative half uh, concentrates on marine fungi half on bacteria so uh, you still have a lot of scope for uh, diversity studies but you have to incorporate molecular as the trend um, unless uh, molecular is included, uh, it will not be so challenging or uh, interesting. So along with uh, morphological studies, one can uh, incorporate uh, molecular studies. Uh, that would be very interesting and a very good uh, contribution. Uh, we have uh, uh, interior areas which have been uh, unexplored. Uh, see, it, always we have this uh, tendency to go to the accessible areas and we miss the inaccessible. For example, I studied Godavari and Krishna Delta regions. And uh, on one side of Krishna Delta, I went because it is uh, quite easy to reach uh, the Tenali, Rapala section. I didn't go the other side, Machilipatna. Similarly, in uh, uh, the other Kahinada mangroves, I went to Korangi and Masantipa, Malisutipa, like that. But I didn't go to Pandi region, which is inaccessible. That means you have to hire a boat it takes seven to eight hours to reach that region so it, such uh, inaccessible areas could be explored number one number two uh, easily uh, plucking and uh, most uh, diverse uh, rhizophora and avicinia are more thoroughly sampled but uh, you may get surprises like uh, the 
soda mohica which we got it has almost 10 new species or eight new species we rep uh, reported from soda mohica which is which was a surprise for us because we thought uh, like usual uh, 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 other trees other plants you don't get much diversity but we got so such uh, uh, less explored host plants um, could be attempted and uh, mangroves that have not been uh, explored like this odisha the sundarbans could be explored uh, and sea grasses could be explored for marine fungi because in kerala coast you have a lot of uh, sea grasses uh, in some pockets and they can be explored for marine fungi they, are, they also host a lot of marine fungi Thank you, sir. One more question, sir. Regarding uh, the succession of marine fungi in mangrove host, yes. is there any study regarding? Succession means there are two types of succession. One is uh, uh, collecting the samples uh, at different seasons. That becomes a seasonal study, seasonality of marine fungi. Succession means you have to have a, a wood piece uh, which is sterilized and then uh, in a litter bag or some uh, any other uh, structure you have to tie it and then monitor it at a frequent intervals you have to go there and collect those samples every two months or three months then only you can study the succession what happens is you you'll be tying uh, tying it to a tree or something some animal or some uh, very freak persons <laughs> will do throw it out so your uh, studies will get disturbed unless you cut them sterilize them hang them and uh, isolate them or uh, collect them at frequent intervals and then examine them you will not get uh, proper succession studies another thing is even in the succession uh, many people report that it is only succession of fruit bodies because after two months when you collect you will find the fruit bodies and that you enumerate there are uh, fungi which could be at mycelial stage and we will be missing them so it succession becomes fruit body succession and not uh, the mycelial fungal stage. Uh, that is what some reporters, uh, means some scientists report like Sally et al, etc. They claim that succession is uh, again a bias because you invariably look uh, at the fruit bodies because that is how you find uh, or identify the fungi. Now this gap could be uh, filled by incorporating the molecular studies which will bring out those mycelial stage fungi also so unless you incorporate the molecular tools also for your succession studies it will not be a complete study on succession otherwise it will just remain as a fruit body succession study not the mycelial stage because mycelial one stage is the one which is functionally involved fruit body is generally at the uh, unfavorable conditions the, the fungus turns into uh, reproductive phase uh, but the mycelial one is the actual functional role having stage so if you can incorporate the molecular tools also uh, in your succession studies uh, and isolate those uh, uh, or take out those uh, uh, mycelial stage fungi also it will not be a, a complete study thank you sir Dr. Sashireko, please. Yeah, I this the uh, previous question has uh, stimulated another question in you. Um, this is regarding the succession. I agree that it is the fruit body that we look out for, and that is the way we think it is succeeding. But is it possible that this mycelial stages? the mycelia of the different fungi will be there in the wood itself itself uh, correct no so yes. in the substratum itself so is it possible for us to culture in different uh, giving it the specific uh, environmental uh, conditions in laboratory is it possible with the same wood yeah you have to bring back and then uh, incubate them in moist chambers huh. and then uh, some of them may uh, produce fruit bodies within one or two months some may take one year yeah, because we tried the wood inoculation, there were so many different mycelial uh, uh, colonies, I mean colonies coming up, it was difficult to identify, differentiate the uh, uh, fungi by the mycelial characters. It's really very difficult. So I, I, I was just thinking whether whether it would be uh, the contaminants have, which have come or whether it is the uh, inhabitant of this wood piece, uh, it, we'll have to literally trace it out, like, you know, so in that way. No, you were talking about uh, cultures. I mean, cultures, culture. yeah, in the lab, in the lab condition, yeah. If we inoculate the wood pieces, 
that is the uh, oh. No, no, no. But uh, unless you uh, process it properly, you will end up getting as well as intensity. Yeah, yeah. A surface after surface sterilizing, hmm. uh, the inner parts, uh, the in, in internal parts uh, of the wood, we are hmm. inoculating, not the external outside part, not the external ones. Um, maybe what you have to do is you chop that uh, wood piece. Huh? wherever you suspect uh, should be colonized by the fungi, you huh. chop them and grind them huh. and then uh, 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 filter them like your particle filtration method. Particulate, huh, huh, huh. Uh, hmm. And uh, even that uh, particle filtration method also, huh. again, there is a problem of this fast growing fungi. Uh, yeah, it's possible, yeah. Uh, possible. So you have to promote the slow growers. Huh. Uh, for that, uh, you can, uh, there is a study which suggests the 48 well plate method where uh, 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 dilution to extension uh, uh, technique has been suggested. That means uh, you go for serial dilution and okay. uh, to the extent that you will get only single colony in that 48 well plate. Okay. 96 is not uh, suggested. They have tried 96, but uh, that's very small. Then they went for mm -hmm. this 48 well plate. Okay. And uh, you have to make sure that uh, you get only single colony in uh -huh. each of those wells. Okay. And okay. it should not be overflowing to the other one. Uh -huh. uh, that is there you can get that slow grower also promoting only then only problem is it will take 20 days or 25 days at yeah. least get the diversity uh, that one but right. uh, in a normal plate uh, you'll get as well as penicillin uh, they will be fast growing and uh, they won't allow the slow growers yeah that's what has been happening all these days so it, that's why i said it's so difficult to uh, eliminate also <laughs> yeah you have to try this uh, chopping of the wood piece and then grinding them and then uh, make it the particles. So uh -huh. particle uh, filtration method, filter it uh -huh. and then uh, go for that uh, dilution to extension. Uh, that uh -huh. means uh, uh, you should not get more than one colony in a well, yeah. that 48 well. Yeah. Yeah. To that okay. extent you have to dilute and uh -huh. then uh, the first 10 days you will not see anything. So you will get uh, disheartened. But uh, slowly after 15 days a small slow grower yeah. will come out. You have to yeah. be patiently watching that. Yeah, you said 48 uh, well plate. Is, is it yes. in a uh, common uh, thing? Yeah, yeah available uh, with high media and uh, you can buy them. Achha, okay. Yeah, I, I'll try that out. Is is there any references uh, which I could... Uh, there are, there are. Uh, there's, of course, uh, the uh, particle filtration technique is well known. Uh, okay. But this dilution to extension is uh, uh, 2007. Some papers have appeared. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Sure. Yeah, thank you. This is one thing I've learned in the entire, I mean, which is very, very different. I'll, I'll have to uh, really look into it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Sarma. Welcome. Yeah. Oh, here no. Ladies and gentlemen, any more questions? Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, this is a great presentation. Uh, I am from Sri Lanka. Uh, so I currently doing uh, freshwater fungal studies in Sri Lanka. So uh, my question is how to, uh, what are the potential of uh, marine fungi against uh, polluted water? Potentials for how to yeah. apply? Yeah, uh, uh, see, basically um, these marine fungi, particularly those ascomycetes, have been shown to be producing some lignin degrading enzymes like uh, like cases uh, or uh, very rarely lignin peroxidases etc and uh, those lignin degrading enzymes have been implicated in uh, degradation of uh, colored pollutants so uh, in uh, see color uh, color dyes are applied in textile industry in paper industry yeah. uh, mm -hmm. leather industry there are various industries which apply the colored means dyes mm -hmm. so they become mm -hmm. color pollutants and uh, mm -hmm. the uh, interesting thing is that those lacases or lignin degrading enzymes also have the capability to degrade the colored pollutants. So the same enzyme which degrades lignin can also degrade the colored pollutants. So your screening can be simple, your uh, uh, lignin degrading. So any uh, uh, analog you can apply in the medium to screen whether it can degrade lignin or not. And then you can directly apply for your colored uh, pollutants to mitigate that. Okay, sir. So can we use uh, marine fungi for degrade the oil film in uh, oceans? 
Yes, yes. Uh, oil field uh, that means uh, marine fungi can degrade the uh, oil pollutants also, but uh, not those uh, fungi which I have shown. Uh, those are typical marine fungi because uh, any studies are not there. But Aspergillus pencilium uh, species isolated from marine environment have been shown to be uh, degrading this uh, oil uh, slick in the marine environment. But uh, basically, it is the consortia which are used. Uh, not uh, in isolation. So a single fungus may not be good because it can break the outer bonds or some particular bond. Whereas if you have consortium, they can work in tandem where the outer bonds are broken by one particular uh, organism, microbe, the other parts are degraded by other microbes. So consortium mode is there. Otherwise, the superbike uh, method is there where uh, Dr. Chakraborty from America has tried uh, uh, through genetic engineering to raise uh, uh, microorganisms, uh, the pseudomonas, uh, with uh, which uh, with uh, several other uh, uh, enzymes, it means uh, the enzymes that can degrade different uh, hydrocarbons. That kind of uh, organism he has genetically raised, which we call it a superbug. That is another approach, but uh, the consortium approach is good where you can incorporate uh, the uh, fungi along with the bacteria. Uh, to work in tandem to degrade the oil slicked. But fungus alone uh, may not be uh, that successful uh, attempt, if you make, uh, I think so. Because uh, in consortium, you have several bacteria also breaking different bonds. Because these uh, hydrocarbons have uh, high, ca high carbon content, uh, the outer bonds broken by some, uh, so some organism, inner bonds are broken by some organism like that. Thank you so much, sir. Welcome. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you still have questions, uh, please uh, send an email to Professor Sharma. I have already shared his contact details in the chat box. OK? Professor Sharma, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I, mu I must say it was an um, authoritative presentation as expected from you because you have spent some 25 years working on marine fungi and the kind of knowledge you have shared with us you know it's uh, you know it's quite quite, quite uh, comprehensive quite impressive and quite uh, inspirational also uh, I'm, uh, i've been quite uh, i have been quite uh, you know inspired by your talk and uh, thank you for uh, doing this wonderful workshop for microvision network i mean you have been very kind to us uh, thank you very much and we hope to see you in our future programs also I take this opportunity to once again thank you and the Microasia for giving this opportunity. And as I said, it's doing a human service by reaching out to a wider audience about the mycology, which is a neglected subject in microbiological studies. You often find microbiology synonymous with bacteria, not with fungi. So we have to bring it to popular. Uh, this is one of the platforms which is making such an attempt. And hence, I congratulate you and uh, hope uh, many such uh, presentations are there. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. I would like to add here that Dr. Sami Damre will conduct a workshop, online workshop, in coming uh, weeks, one, in one of the weeks on deep sea fungi. And it will be kind of complementary to what you are talking today. Thank you so much, Dr. Sarma. We will let you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.